What's up everybody? It's Conger Live here. Thanks for joining the channel. Today what I want to talk to you guys about are the top 10 characters in my opinion in the game right now. Now a couple of things I'm not going to be able to mention all the characters that are on the top of the tier list because I don't have experience with all these characters. Um, I do have experience fighting against them. I'm also going to take into consideration the availability of some of these characters. So there may be a character or two that should probably be on this list that I'm not going to bring up. Uh, also, this is just my opinion based on my personal experience, um, not only within the game, but within communicating in the community. Uh, so with that said, if you disagree, that's fine. Leave a comment down below who you think should have been on this list. And if there's nothing else, let's get started. Number 10, in my opinion, is Casey Jones. I used Casey Jones for a long time. He hits really hard. Uh, basically the poor man's Zorax, but that will change. Um, he may be considered better once Zorax gets his nerf. Um, the one thing I don't like about Casey is how he gives himself negative alertness. So if one of your supports gives him some defense during that time frame when he's reduced his alertness, he's not going to get that defense bonus that you really want to give him. Um, other than that, he's great. He hits super hard. I've used him for a long time. I'm no longer using him. As you can see, I have him at 225, so I do have him very well invested. And I think he's a great character. You get him early on at two stars, even maybe the one star in the beginning of the game. So definitely worth using. Um, that's Casey Jones at number 10. In the number 9 slot, this may surprise some of you, but maybe not, I'm going to say it's Rocksteady. Now, I haven't used Rocksteady personally, but based on having to fight against him and I did put him in my as the best two-star tank uh, for new players. Um, he does a great job of reducing the strength of the enemy team so he doesn't just take less damage himself but takes less damage for the whole team and uh, his charge and his blaster he does energy damage which is kinda nice to mix things up because I think there are more physical damage characters than energy damage characters in this game. So I think Rocksteady is an absolutely great tank to use. Um, so I'm putting Rocksteady at number 9. And at number 8, I'm going to say it's Ray. Ray, I think, is a slightly better tank than Rocksteady. Some people may disagree. I've used Ray a lot. Um, I got him at 3 stars and used him for a really long time. I really enjoyed using him. I felt like he was very, very useful in my squad. I have, of course, stopped using him since I got Toka, um, but he's a great tank with his support and overall just defense, and his hit point pool is decent. So Ray gets the number eight slot on my top ten list. And in number seven, Master Splinter. You're going to see a lot of supports on this list because almost everybody knows by now you need to have a couple supports on your team to really do well. I'm running Splinter at the moment um, because even though they may be top five characters, I don't think the top five make the best team. I think Splinter's ability here, this one, this Ninja Master, where he the start of combat, he gives everybody defense and strength and alertness and haste for 30 seconds is great. He's done his thing, so even if he dies, uh, people have that bonus for 30 seconds. Really, really great support character, Splinter at number 7. In number 6, I'm going to say it's Leonardo. Now, Leonardo does a decent amount of damage. I really love his support where strike together, where as long as he or any ally is within range one of another ally, they get bonus strength and haste just attacking more, doing more damage. Now, strength is really important for physical damage heroes as opposed to the blaster damage, which take focus to do the extra damage, but uh, it's still really nice. Um, so Leonardo gets the number six slot. And coming in at number five is Donatello. I've had Donatello at four stars longer than the other two. That I just mentioned Leon Splinter for supports, which is why I think he rises above. His AI targeting of his special is kind of annoying, this Omni Gadget, but when it hits correctly, it gives defense to everyone and that barrier to everyone. 
That is really, really nice. It also reduces the armor of targets that have a high armor, making it to where your physical damage characters can do more damage to the enemy. So Donatello is almost a must in every team. Um, I'm cycling Leo and Splinter out to try different combinations before I take Donatello out, which is why Donatello is above them at number five. And in number four, the leader of the Foot Clan, Shredder. I think Shredder is an amazing character. Uh, ever since they did his rework, he's been awesome. I really like using him. He was my first four-star hero, and I was so excited to get him back then when he was trash, and I was like, oh my god, why does Shredder suck so bad? And they finally gave him a rework, and I feel like he has where he should be. He definitely belongs in the top 10 in my opinion. Um, he could very well become the best damage dealer in the game when Zorax gets reduced. I really like how he disarms the enemy so they're not able to attack for a couple seconds. And he also does some damage over time which I feel is an underrated mechanic and can really really help your team uh, move past some of those bigger characters. His special also hits pretty darn hard in taking away defense. So that's why Shredder gets my number four. Now before I get into my top three characters, some of you may already have an idea of what these characters are. I want to mention a couple things. I didn't put Renette on this list because I haven't used her enough. She's the new character. I also haven't had any experience with Savanti. Most of what I hear about Savanti isn't that great. Some people were saying his stun doesn't work or maybe just the animation doesn't look like a other stun so they think it's not working. I'm not sure. I know they said they fixed some bug that he had right away um, they, but they fixed it really quickly. Um, so these two characters didn't make the top 10 list only because there's limited data on them. And the other character that I did not put on the top 10 list that probably should be there is Frosty because there is such limited availability to him. I don't have him, but I know that fighting against him in PvP can be really annoying. So I didn't mention uh, Renette, Savanti, or Frosty, other than the honorable mentions they're getting right now. Now I think the number three character in the game is probably our best tank in the game, Toka. Toka has so much hit points. He can just take a beating. He gives himself defense. He roots the people around him so they can't run away. Um, the AI makes it to where most of the time characters are going to target the tank. So if he's able to get a nice crowd around him and your attackers can just keep hitting them around them, he's going to really help you control that battlefield. He's like a wall that they have to get past. So if they don't have any characters that dash across the, the field, he's going to really help keep them where they're at. So, and with that high hit points and giving himself defense, the best tank in the game. I don't think that's changing anytime soon. So Toka gets the number three spot. And moving into number two, April O'Neil. April likely, maybe should be, the number one character in this game because of how easily she is accessible. Her stun, her bonus will, her alertness, her defense, like she's just, she's the best support in the game. And because of her kit, being a kit character, even at three stars, I'm able to use her with my four star squad and still use her. There's some levels in Channel 6, I have to put April in. I can't use all four star characters because April's just that good. All right, so April is number two, it's probably next month, or by season five, she'll be number one. But as it stands right now, Zorax is still the number one character in the game. Now we know his nerf is coming, but it's not coming until Season 5, according to the devs on the Discord. They will be giving us the new Channel 6 uh, ability to drop in Channel 6 during or near the end of Season 4. They said it's going to happen in Season 4, but they don't do major character balance changes except for between seasons. They may do some small tweaks here and there. So being that they're not going to do a major tweak 
to Zorax until between season four and five. He's still going to be an amazing character for the entire next season. So we have two weeks left of this season. We got eight weeks in the next season. Even though they know he's broken because his strength scaling is happening when all of his allies are using abilities, not just when he's using an ability. That's why he gets such a high strength bonus to be able to hit so hard. Okay, so this is going to change, but it's not going to change for like 10 weeks. So until that happens, Zorax is still the number one character in the game because he does so much damage. Do I wish I had him? Yes. Am I happy he's being nerfed? Yes. Am I going to jump for joy when I get him? Only if I get him within the next 10 weeks. Otherwise, um, he's probably going to fall completely out of the top 10 list after getting his nerf. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But for now, Zorax is still the best character in the game. If you have him, great for you. Use him. I don't think it would be a waste at all to invest in him while he's still very useful. You're going to get higher in Channel 6. You're going to get higher in PvP just by using this character. So that's what we have for our top 10 list, everybody. Zorax, April, Toka, Shredder, Donnie, Leo, Splinter, Ray, Rocksteady, and Casey. Once again, there's plenty of other great characters in here like Frosty, Drag, Antrax. I would have loved to fit them on this list. I just can't fit everybody. We don't have a whole lot of characters in here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with Tempestra since they've added her skill. I'm working on leveling her up. I started leveling up Razar when uh, I knew he got a rework. Most people said his rework was underwhelming, so I stopped working on him. But that's someone I might bring back in later. I think he may be undervalued. So... There you have it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Ninja kick that like button and subscribe if you don't already. We just want to game smarter here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.